Hi, I'm Old North Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and today I am not talking about Old North stuff. I am pursuing my curiosity about how stuff gets made. So I've got a couple videos uh, kind of in a similar theme. Uh, I talked to my friend Josh about how he makes a holster once a couple years ago. And uh, this also kind of fits into a theme of looking at people who do cool stuff in my local area. So I am at the Great Frame Up in Littleton, Colorado, and uh, well, Melissa McKinney here is the owner. Would Hi. you tell us a little bit about what goes on here and uh, what we're gonna look at, for example, today? Uh, well, we frame anything that you wanna bring in to get framed, anything that's special to you, so family photos, heirlooms, dinosaur pictures. Dinosaur pictures, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, just about anything that you wanna, you know, have a keepsake for a long time of, we preserve and make it so you can display it on your wall. Um, and Kayla, you're the manager, right? Kayla's mm -hmm. the manager. Yeah, I'm the store manager here. And um, let's see, I guess it was in about mid-June, so about 10 years ago, that I was in here. And uh, I think what had happened is, because I'm a very old man, I read those coupons that come in the mail, right? Because <laughs> I want to see if I can get like a discount on Metamucil or something. And <laughs> I saw something for the the frame store and I had just gotten this stegosaurus picture at another cool local place, the Morrison Natural History Museum, uh, because it was stegosaurus day, right, celebrating our state fossil. And I could not find a frame that would fit this because it's such a weird uh, size, like 11 by 17 or something. Yep. Like there's no 11 by 17 ready-made frame. So I'm like, oh, I, I kind of want to frame this because I want to be part of my Zoom background for when I do Zoom interviews. Um, so I saw this coupon and I thought, oh, I'll go in there and check it out. And as soon as we started consulting about it, I realized that a lot goes into this, right? It's not just, okay, here's a size, here's a color. And I thought, well, this is really interesting. So can we talk a little bit about like somebody brings in, you know, a weird stegosaurus picture and what decisions go into, well, how does this get framed up? A lot of times the first questions we'll ask you are, where do you plan on hanging it? You know, and is there anything in the picture that really pops out to you that you find appealing? I mean, obviously, the stegosaurus. stegosaurus yeah. But, um, you know, for a lot more colorful pictures, sometimes it's the rocks or sometimes it's the lake that yeah. really evokes something for you. And you just said you plan on using this as a zoom background, so you kind of want it to take up some room on your wall, which is useful information to us. Mm -hmm. And then we ask if you have anything else going on in the room, like do you have a collage of pictures? And it sounds like uh, I have a giant painting of a rattlesnake and a kangaroo rat done in coffee that oh, will be next cool. to Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. So it sounds like you've got a collection going. Yeah. Um, Actually, similar colors. Oh, cool. Yeah. I can imagine that coffee would probably be mm -hmm. a little bit darker. Um, so from there, we just start suggesting like mats and frames that would meet those criteria. So for instance, for you, we want to bring out the Stegosaurus. We pulled this orange mat which we don't want a whole orange mat because it competes with oh, your sure. piece because then you see you've got dual interests. But we started adding in some other colors like the background color. And, um, I see, and kind of also like switching the relative prominence. Yeah, so it's still an accent and it still pulls the color, but this way it's not taking your entire attention away from the dinosaur. Yeah. It okay, just I see what you mean bringing like a border to the piece and keeping your eye on that color. Um, we could go with like a lighter mat and lighter mats tend to kind of open stuff up. Hmm. So lighter is going to make it appear a little bit larger on your wall and just be a little more open. Interesting. Actually, that might be kind of nice. And we could still like, I. I think the reason this mat was picked is probably because it was dinosaur looking. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got kind of like, uh, I don't know, like a leathery texture. Maybe like you could imagine stegosaur skin being, I don't know. So what we could do, and we can change stuff around, it's not too late, is, you know, still keep a little bit of that stegosaurus texture. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. But have it be a little more open is a little more as opposed to closed down. And I think that kind of helps like draw the eye in. inward, yeah. 
Yeah, and it lets your eye kind of go back and forth, mm -hmm. whereas the dark around it kind of focuses your eye in, like immediately. Hmm. Like, I don't know if you can want me to pull this down, but you can see the dark mat kind of closes in on it. So the dark mat there, what? what? It kind of closes in, it like, it doesn't really allow the picture to be open, but it works well with the consort poster because, you know, they're all standing really close, so it kind of makes it claustrophobic in a way. Yeah, I can see but it. But a good claustrophobic, not one that makes you want to cry. <laughs> um, this girl with the antler head too, she's got a dark mat on the outside of her, and it helps just kind of confine you into the picture. Like, there's so much going on that it keeps your focus in. Yeah, I see what you mean. And it also kind of expands the amount of, you know, the darkness. It looks like she's in a bigger dark room or something, yeah. Yeah, it's, it can get a little confining. So in your picture, like, the difference would be, you know, I took the tan out, we can put it back, but the, you know, dark where it kind of confines it in, or we could do a light that kind of opens it up. I think I prefer that, the lighter color kind of opening it up. I think I like the lighter opening it up too, just because it's a little less competition for your eye. It's not bouncing between the two things. Mm -hmm. And the paper has a kind of a texture that looks a little bit like that. Yeah, it's got that like um, almost parchment model. Yeah, parchment's a nice word for it. This is plain. I think the texture goes better with your paper because you've got textured paper. Yeah, for sure. I see what you mean. So we could do something, maybe actually we show a little bit more red and a little less brown. The orange is gonna tie you back to the frame, so it's gonna mimic. Yeah, without being like exactly the same shade, which might be, I don't know, jarring. Yeah, if they were is too it? much of the same thing, it causes your eye to not bounce around or move the way you want it to. It's an interesting picture. I mean, like he does all of his work in that kind of Rufus orange versus something a little more modern like two tone. Okay, so what is the relative uh, strength or advantage? Uh, more just your your personal style. So some customers really prefer a traditional look uh, versus others prefer more contemporary look. Turn the temporary back up. I don't know. I so think I kind of prefer the orangish color. I think the orange is cool because you have the lines in the frame and then you have the lines. Yeah, the kind of like. Make up the drawing. Because this is more like a wooden striation, right? But then mm -hmm. it, this actually mimics like an almost like wooden striation, especially in the plates. Yeah. yeah, I think it's more interesting. Right, I mean, if you're going to frame it, like the frame yeah. might as well be cool in and of itself. Well, we always say, you know, be eclectic and follow your gut. I mean, the more fun it is, as long as it's not taking away from the artwork. Yeah. So do you wind up measuring the entire picture, or is it like you're looking for something a little bit less? A little bit less. Um, with, like, three sides of your picture, because the dinosaur fills it pretty closely, we want to leave as much room as possible. But we also don't want it to come falling through that hole that we're going to cut. Yeah, in sure. The mat. sure. So we've got to come in a little bit. The sky is kind of up to you. Um, there's a lot of space up here that it, I don't know if there needs to be. I'd usually recommend like a little bit extra space, but we could probably come in and do like maybe like 10 and a quarter, because that gives you about an inch and a half above him, which would account for some sky space, but not, I mean, it yeah, depends on half an you inch. You don't want it to come in like right here, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to be like hugging him, so. You know, this is probably some standard European paper size that we don't use. Anymore. It's a digital print size. Oh, is it's it? It's a standard digital print. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I don't know anything. <laughs> so it's 17, so we probably want to do like 16 and 5 eighths, just so we have that a little bit that the mag can hold on to. Okay. So we're going with a little bit darker. Yeah, so it's a little darker. We found back there a little bit more orange in it. <laughs>
Um, it's a miter saw, but it's a specific Italian saw. Huh. I've never so. seen one. Yeah, the only thing it does is 45. What do you call this? It's a vise, a framer's vise. Okay, so you put... You Glue. Put, yeah, and you put both pieces in the vise. And then just I kind see. of adjust until you get the perfect corner. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Well, way easier than trying to just do it by hand. Yeah, and you get that perfect corner. The saw helps because it cuts perfect miters, so like... It just makes my life really easy. But it's how we can get through so many projects in a day. I see for attaching the different mats to each other. Right. So we always do our reveals different sizes so that your eye gets some interest. So it's called the old bird. So you can see this is an eighth inch and then this is three sixteenths. Makes sense. So that means we can take care of our bird. And to encase artwork within the mats. But in your case, because it's a print, we're going to use art grade tape. So this is specifically artist tape, is what it's called. Is it double sided? It's just a single sided mass grade type of tape. Oh, I see. You're touching it. Yeah, you want to wipe it to the back. And we actually chose this glass for a particular reason, right? This was the non-glare glass because it's... Yep, it's got an optical coating on both sides that um, brings, like, reduces glare a lot. Wow. Never gets, like, less intimidating, though. That's all there is to cutting glass. It's scoring and popping. So what kind of stuff do you get people bringing in? Um, so we have a lot of, well, photographs is probably the main one. And then um, photographs, you like art prints. We do a lot of concert photos. And then one of the main things we actually do is needle art. So this is an example of a needle art. Um, it's like a uh, cross stitch on linen. So what we do with this is we'll pin it up to our board like so, and then um, pick out matting if they want to do matting. You know, this is a Christmas thing, so maybe we'll do a green Christmassy kind of look to it, so we can mat it like. We're just shooting bee nails in the back, so I'll just engage it and show you um, like that. Into the back of the bridge. Oh, okay, I see. Cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for your time and your help with this and uh, I now have a great addition to my uh, Zoom interview backgrounds and uh, from beautiful Colorado as usual wishing you all the best. <laughs>